Hello, you watch a PC Jack. I hope you all had a great Christmas, but we're going to start the year out right with the first build of 2023. And it's going to be in the Fractal Ridge. Now the Fractal Ridge came out a couple of weeks ago, but I've been very excited to do a build in this case. So in today's video, we're going to transfer my ITX system into the Fractal Ridge, and I'm going to show you the whole build process. We're going to be a little ambitious with the parts we're going to use for today's build, but I'll show you those as we get through the video. So I can't wait any longer, let's just get to building. So to start, we've got our motherboard and CPU here. We have the Ryzen 9 3900 XT, which is a 12 core and 24 thread CPU. And that is paired with the ASUS B550i ROG Strix motherboard, which is a mini ITX motherboard, which fits in our case. Now, in terms of cooling, we are slightly limited into what we can do. Now, the memory I'm using is actually a little bit too tall for those low profile coolers like the Be Quiet Shadow Rock LP or the Noctua NHL-12S, which I both have, but I've got 3600-speed memory, which is my only kit, and it's crucial ballistics, but it's a little too tall. So the best option we have is going to be the Noctua NHL-9A, and given the size of this cooler and the 105 watt TDP of this CPU, we may have to do a little bit of tweaking to get it to run properly, so we'll try it out and see what happens. If not, we may have to uh, reconsider our cooling options for our CPU, but I think we should be able to do some BIOS magic to uh, make this work. So uh, we'll just get this installed and then we'll carry on with assembling the rest of the motherboard. So installing the NHL 9A is a little bit weird because you actually have to install it upside down. But um, I'll quickly show you how it's done. If you are looking for more of a dedicated tutorial on exactly how to install the NHL 9A, I do have a dedicated tutorial video on the channel. It's, uh, like I said, a little strange, but uh, get this on now and then we can move on with the rest of the build. Then we flip that back around. And we just gotta get our CPU fan plugged in. Tuck that along the side. And boom, that's our CPU cooler installed. Now, next up, like I said, for our memory, we're going for Crucial Ballistics. This is a two by eight gigabyte kit of 3600 speed memory. So uh, it's a pretty good kit. I did want to keep this because of the memory speed. If I do have to drop down because of the CPU cooler, then we'll maybe go for a kit of Corsair Vengeance, but I've only got a 3200 speed kit to spare. So we'll see how it goes with this and we'll take it from there. Now, the last thing we need to install on this before we can actually put the motherboard in the case is going to be our storage. So we're going for M.2 only. And we've got a crucial P2 for our boot drive. This is a 250 gigabyte drive, so it's not particularly big, but I do like to keep a separate boot drive for a lot of my systems. I did order a one terabyte SSD for mass storage and games, but it's not here yet. So I'm gonna make do with this, but I would advise getting a larger SSD or at least another SSD for a build like this. There is an additional M.2 slot on the rear of the motherboard, but we're gonna use the one on front for now. And then when that other SSD arrives, we can pop that in the one on the back. Now, that's our motherboard completely ready to go. We've got our CPU and CPU cooler installed. We've got our memory. We've got our storage. Well, at least half of it until the other memory arrives. Um, but yeah, we're basically completely ready to go. So uh, let's start working with the case and get everything sorted. Okay, so while we've got the case completely opened up, I thought we'd take a little bit of a tour on the inside of the case. So in this area over here is where our motherboard is actually installed. And then next to this, we install our power supply. And on the rear of that, on the back side, you can actually install 2.5 inch drives. We're not gonna be using those for today, but it's good to know that you can have that if you are looking to install those. And then in this bottom section over here is where we actually install our GPU. And as you can see, it's got these two huge 140 mil fans, which is gonna help quite a lot with keeping GPU temps under control. So I think next up, we'll just get the motherboard installed and maybe do a bit of cable management and then we'll get the GPU in. So first up, we're gonna to wanna to get our IO shield installed. You don't wanna forget that. It may be integrated on your motherboard, but my one doesn't, so I've gotta put this one in myself. Okay, so I just realized before I can actually install the motherboard, that we are actually gonna to have to remove this GPU bracket first. So we get this out the way, we can then put the motherboard in. Okay, that's better. Now, one of the things I am actually gonna do before I install the motherboard is I'm gonna pre-plug in my eight pin power to my CPU, only because where it is in the corner, it's gonna be very difficult to actually plug it in. So I'm gonna plug it in in advance and it should save us a bit of headache down the line. 
So with our motherboard installed, what I'm thinking the next priority is going to be is actually getting a lot of these smaller cables plugged in and connected before we actually get the power supply installed. And then we can focus on the larger, more bulkier cables like our CPU power, our 24 pin, and also the power for our GPU. So we'll get through all those as well as installing that GPU bracket again. And then hopefully we'll be on the last bits of the build. Okay, so uh, we're making quite a decent bit of progress. Took quite a bit of work getting everything plugged in. I did have to mess around with the cables that are already plugged in before I put the power supply in because they were blocking the uh, the screw down points. But overall, it's looking pretty neat and tidy, but all our front panel connectors are plugged in. Our motherboard's 24 pin is plugged in, 8 pin power for CPU was there, and that's all connected to the power supply now. And we've done a bit of cable management on the back. There are not much uh, in terms of options for tie down points anyway, but I've managed to get it a bit neat and tidy and hopefully the side panels should still fit down on there. And uh, it does include these velcro straps which are pretty useful, but I have used just one zip tie just to hold them down in this point but here. So all that's left now is to actually get the GPU installed and then we can power it up, make sure it's working and get to testing. So, system's all set up, and uh, it's looking pretty good, I have to say. And uh, as you can see, we went for the RTX 3080 Founders Edition for our GPU, so uh, it should be a pretty powerful system for 4K gaming. Again, we are gonna have to test everything like temperatures and whatnot, but first off, let's make sure it actually powers on. So, just switch it on. Woohoo! So, we've got a fan spinning. Let's see if we get a post. Ah, there we go, we've got a post now, so it uh, looks like the system is uh, actually working. So, next up, I think we'll have to get the uh, the panel back on and uh, we'll get to testing our temperatures and seeing exactly how this thing runs. Okay, so it's actually been two days since I built this system and there's some good news and some bad news. So, let's start with the good news. And the good news is that our GPU is performing really well in this case and those two uh, 140mm fan set as intake are doing a really good job of keeping that GPU cool. I am running a mild undervolt, but overall still, GPU is running really well in this system, so no complaints there. Where I do have complaints though, is with our CPU, because it's getting a little too toasty for my liking and even at idle, the CPU is sitting at around the low 60s, which is not an ideal place to be in the first place. And then once you put in even a gaming load, not just a multi-core workload, we're sitting in the 90s to low 90s, and the system is behaving a little strangely. Now, the problem is, despite the fact that the NHL 9A is a little too small, it still can run with the 3900 XT, which does have a high TDP. Now where the problem lies, I think, is going to be with our CPU cooler. And while I did try and mess around in the BIOS and Ryzen Master with like enabling eco mode, bit of undervolting, setting like a lower clock, nothing really helped dramatically. So the problem is, once the side panel is on, I couldn't actually get any other fans in here, like especially around the side. So that could have helped with exhaust or intake, but I just can't get it in there. And without anything for the CPU cooler, it's just that heat is building up and just getting worse and worse over time. So I don't think the NHL 98 is going to cut it in this case. But I have decided I am going to be making a couple of adjustments to the actual build itself for a couple of reasons. One is to lower the noise levels because this fan does get a little loud. Also to have a cooler system and also some minor differences in regards to our actual hardware. So to start with, rather than actually limiting the performance of our 3900 XT, given that this system isn't a productivity machine, there's no reason for me not to use this CPU, which is only 6 cores and 12 threads, but it is much better in regards to single threaded performance, and also has a lower TDP at 65 watts. So that should help us out quite a lot, and I could also potentially run a negative V-core offset, even on this, and that should help with our firmware a little more. To actually help with our noise levels and cooling, we are going to switch to the NHL12S though from Noctua. And this should help us run the system a lot quieter and cooler due to the fact it's got a much larger heatsink array and also has a much larger fan. But if we use the NHL12S, it does mean we can't actually use our crucial ballistics memory anymore because it's not low profile enough for that CPU cooler. 
So, we are going to have to change our memory out to something a little slower, but it's not going to make much of a difference. So instead, we're going to go for Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200 speed, 16 gigabyte memory. So, we're not losing capacity, but we are going to drop our speed down from 3600 to 3200. We may be able to have a little bit of a mess around with overclocking it, but we'll just run it as is for now. But this memory will fit in with our CPU cooler, which is the most important thing. And lastly, our secondary drive has finally arrived, so I can actually install this. So uh, we get a bit of an additional storage space on our system itself. And as you see, we got a one terabyte WD Black. This is a PCI Gen 4 drive with ridiculous read and writes, which should be more than enough for what I'm gonna be using it for. So let's uh, change some things out, and hopefully the system will be in a much better place than it is currently, fingers crossed. Okay, so I think that is now actually the final build. Obviously, we had to make a couple of switches with hardware, including our cooler, our CPU, and memory, but it is in a much better position than it was before. I've actually been in the desktop and I've tested this, and the CPU was only hitting around 70 degrees C under a multi core workload, which is pretty good going, so it should be good news for our gaming performance as well. So, really, that's about it. That is the First build of 2023 and also my first build in the Fractal Ridge. I'm going to be doing a bit more further testing on it, but let me know if you'd like to see a follow-up video where I actually show you some gaming performance on this system. But apart from that, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.